Hi, I'm Hamilton. Raquel Bennett, come on in. I'm glad you're here. It's very beautiful. Thanks. I was experiencing episodes of recurrent and debilitating depression. I wanted to kill myself. I couldn't stand it. It was so bad. And I had tried psychotherapy, extensive psychotherapy, and I had taken a variety of conventional oral medications. And they worked somewhat, but I still had terrible trouble with episodes of depression. And uh, I wandered into having an experience of ketamine. Suddenly I had the experience that someone had taken a giant golden key. This key was stuck in my ear, that the key turned and clicked on my brain. I became obsessed with the question of what is this? What happened to me? And does it do that thing to other people? And does it do that thing predictably? And how do we understand this? And so I, that started my 15 year long obsession with understanding this tool and how to use it. People call me the conservative queen of ketamine because I love ketamine and I love talking about ketamine, but I actually have a somewhat conservative point of view about when it should be used. And you're conservative because you want it to be available to people. It's in a somewhat precarious position. If it is misinterpreted publicly, it could be problematic. Yes, I'm conservative because this is a very powerful tool. I really think that people need to be using this tool in a supervised setting. That said, I think it's really interesting and I think we don't fully understand uh, all of the potential of this particular medicine. And could you tell me about the different ways that ketamine is used therapeutically? What are the different ways? What are the benefits? What are the motivations for these different sorts of administration? There's different forms of treatment. I, I think the most useful thing that I can do in this moment is to clarify that some people get low-dose ketamine infusions, usually administered by IV. Using this approach is specifically designed to be sub-psychedelic, and it, it works pretty well for people who are having severe and refractory depression, but some folks need a higher dose. In ketamine-facilitated psychotherapy, um, th we're using the ketamine to help people have disinhibition, more relaxation and more ease in talking about material that's difficult for them to get to otherwise. There's yet another approach to working with ketamine, and that is mystical ketamine or psychedelic ketamine where the clinician has the intention of inducing or inviting psychedelic experience on purpose. And the idea is that the visions that people have are meaningful and can be interpreted. Uh, there's, people often report space travel. People report that they have the vision that their awareness is able to come out of their body and travel or move uh, and sometimes come off the planet. And sometimes people report that they believe that they have died, that they're experiencing themselves disembodied and that they interpret that as, uh, as traveling beyond their own death. Some patients find it enjoyable. Some patients find this to be quite distressing. And again, this is a matter of preparation. How do you prepare them? That is a great question. Um, how do you prepare someone for something as strange as that? I don't know, maybe I, impossible. Well, this is always a challenge, right, is because I don't want to say too much about what people are likely to experience because I don't want to color their experience. I want them to have their own, their own unique, spontaneous experience. On the other hand, I want to be thoughtful and ethical, helping people be prepared for, for how strange it is. I don't believe in scaring people. I don't think that's useful. Raquel agreed to evaluate me to determine if I might be a good candidate for high-dose therapeutic ketamine. If you've had any previous psychological or psychiatric treatment. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. I saw a child psychiatrist for a brief period and then have been in and out of psychiatric and psychological treatment for most of my life since high school. <clears throat> and that's about it. I've been prescribed antidepressants in the past. Selegiline. Hamilton, in your case, uh, you've described that you've experienced moderate depression in the past. And so, in that sense, I think it might be helpful for you. And in addition, I think that there's an educational value here for all your viewers to learn about this interesting and beautiful medicine. I've always been a little bit afraid of ketamine. So, I wrote this massive review article about 
dissociative anesthetics and their use non-medically and ultimately arrived in a completely ambivalent place about the dangers of ketamine. It's clear that there are some, it's clear that there are also therapeutic effects. It's clear that under certain circumstances it can be neurotoxic, and it's clear that under other circumstances it can be neuroprotective. It is a drug that you can say almost anything about and it will be true. So all of that ambiguity made me a little bit uncomfortable and I decided not to use dissociative anesthetics at all anymore. But I'm still interested in dissociatives, so why not give it a shot? Five thirty-seven, one hundred and twenty milligrams intramuscular. I can already feel it a little bit now, and I can hear a ringing in my ears. Strange ringing sensation, and now it has very much begun. It's very much begun, and I'm drifting drifting into a place that is sweaty and warm and strange and beautiful. It smells like barbecue, sort of. Notions of mesquite, notions of peyote, notions of quietly, notions of these journeys these difficulties, these processes, these experiences, these attempts to understand. What? 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 The realms, the realms. What are the realms? Are there other people going around talking about realms? What does it mean? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> There's a cabal. A cabal of salvia leaves. A cabal of my own consciousness. A cabal of everything. I don't get it. I do not understand one bit of it. I want to. This chemical, it starts to interfere with my glutamate and I start to tile my reality in my consciousness, 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 consciousness. <laughs> consciousness. Wow. Do you make sense of anything? Can anything be made sense of? Is there any sense to any of this? How are you feeling at this point? Do you have any after effects from your ketamine session? Oh yes, I mean, I'm still, I'm not back to baseline. How's your vision? My vision is, I could probably read a book now. I think I could read. And are you experiencing headache at all? No, not at all. Okay. So it sounds like you're doing pretty well. You were extremely talkative. Yeah. Unusually talkative. Unusually. Uh, spontaneously. I think you might be the most talkative and also the most coherent uh, patient I've ever had. Uh, you, you, you had a lot to say. I see fidget spinners, I see braids, I see mint leaves, Haribo gummies. Did anyone meet Calvin Stevens? John Lilly called it the Creation Network. <laughs> One thing that stood out for me uh, from the beginning of the session is that you said, I don't want to do damaging things. Of course, drugs have this reputation of being very damaging, and it's an uphill battle to convince anyone that there's such thing as constructive or healthy drug use. That in and of itself is very difficult for most people to 
comprehend. So maybe it was about convincing myself, maybe it was about, it was certainly about convincing myself because I have some misgivings about ketamine, even though I also am fascinated by ketamine and think that it's extremely powerful and useful in certain instances. But I, I, I think that what stands out for me in listening to you now is the importance of having respect for how powerful this tool is. I, I think there's real potential here for it to be therapeutic and of true value to some people. I also think that with any powerful tool, there's a lot of damage that could be done. I'm aware of the risks associated with this kind of treatment, but I choose to do it anyway because, in my case, it so dramatically enhances the quality of my life. At this point, uh, what, what questions do you have or do you have any reflections on what has happened? Yeah, I think it's really fascinating. I'm very supportive of everything that you do and I really appreciate that you allowed me to take part in all of this.